Can we just take a half second and appreciate the Padres for deluding themselves into thinking they had a chance? How do the Clippers stack up against the rest of the NBA, position by position? And the Rams, they also have questions about fixing or filling out their defense in the preseason. Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It's August 13th, 2022. By the time you guys see this, I'm gonna be on a plane heading back home to my wife. It's time to be back with the wife, but let's talk sports first, right? I wanna thank the new subscriber who joined in. If you like the content we've been putting out, clickety clack the like button, clickety clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell, hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new clips. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist and by all means comment. I am no longer in Omaha by the time you see this, it'll make me so bloody happy. Let's look at the scoreboard before we get to the news and notes. Trace Thompson hits a three run home run last night. Tony Gonsolin improves to 14 and one. Dodgers eight, Kansas City three. The Dodgers have an 11 game winning streak and a 16 game lead in the NL West. We get it, they are good at baseball. You ever go to a sporting event, by the way, and they ask for a moment of silence? Can we have a moment of uncontrollable laughter over the Padres fans thinking that Ta Fernando Tatis was gonna lead them somewhere? Oh, it's so good. When I'm not making this clip, I just sometimes think about it and start cracking up because it's not just the 80 game suspension for the performance enhancing drugs that we found out about last night, right? It's the injuries from pointless, stupid, dumb crap. He broke his wrist in a, in a motorcycle crash, right? So before the year, the uh, reporters, they go up to him and they go, hey, uh, when did you get into, what day did you get into a moto motorcycle crash? And his answer, which one? <laughs> you are my type of padre, dude. Way to aim high. Meanwhile, tonight, the Dodgers will play the Royals again at 5. Andrew Heaney is 1-0. and oh. He'll face Brad Keller, 6-12. and 12. In MLS, the Galaxy, man, they are on the ropes. They will play host to Vancouver at 7 tonight. The Galaxy, they will not have Ricky Puj, the big-name midfielder that they uh, took from FC Barcelona a week or so ago. His visa issues are not solved yet. Meantime, the Galaxy have won just four MLS matches since May. Now, the total opposite, honestly, it's LAFC, who will play Charlotte at 7 o'clock. LAFC have won their last five MLS matches. MLB Network, former Major League ball player Mark DeRosa said that Dodgers starting pitcher Julio Arias has become dominant because of tweaks in his mechanics that actually increase the speed of his pitcher, his pitches. The reason I bring this up is at the beginning of the year, the LA Times noticed his speed was down. They speculated he was hurt and would need to go, uh, uh, God knows what, surgery, whatever. Not so, he's just fine. These tweaks apparently added just two miles an hour to his fastball. Now, you might be saying that's not much, but apparently it's the winner's edge because he was being beaten, beaten the hell. They were beating the hell out of him at the start of the year. Two more miles an hour, and now he's just blowing everybody by with high heat that nobody can catch up with. It's intriguing, the, ed, the little slim edge between somebody who's just a punching bag on the mound and somebody who could be the next Clayton Kershaw. And the reason I said Clayton Kershaw, he played catch in Kansas City yesterday. He said he was already feeling better after getting some injections to try to ease the pain in his lower back. Also, Dave Roberts says catcher Austin Barnes, he has left the team for a family emergency. He's going to be gone for a minimum of three days. Tony Walters will be with the team in the interim. The Athletic has ranked every position for every National Basketball Association team. In other words, all the centers by team, all of the power forwards by team. Yeah, not just the starters, but the backups. In other words, do the Lakers have this and whatever? So the Clippers, the thing that really jumped out at me, 
The Clippers rank 25th at point guard. Really? It's a little startling. Remember, they made the deal to get John Wall. Now, John Wall hasn't played in a while. So, okay, I can see where that would lower the value a little bit. But then you're also sitting there going, wait a second. What about Reggie Jackson, who was their starter last year? Well, anyway, according to The Athletic, their, their argument is this. Point guards who are good are all over the league. And Reggie Jackson simply wasn't efficient enough to be upper echelon. Which, if you're a Clipper fan, maybe you agree. And as for John Wall, again, he didn't play last year. So we have a very limited amount of information to go with with Clipper point guards. If you are one of those people who is easily offended by those sort of rankings, take heart. The Clippers are ranked second at shooting guard with Paul George. They are ranked second at small forward with Kawhi Leonard. And as for power forward and center, they're mid. They're mid. Yesterday, we mentioned that there will be uh, that if there's going to be competition in the LA Rams training camp to think defensive back, okay? And I bring this up again because we now know that six Rams defensive backs will not play in the preseason at all. And that pretty much means they've made the team. That's going to be Jalen Ramsey, Troy Hill, Jordan Fuller, Taylor Rapp, Nick Scott, and David Long Jr., you may as well just say they made the team. Now, that leaves four spots, maybe five, because an NFL team typically carries about 10 defensive backs, and then they dress eight for the game. The Rams are a little bit different. They really, really uh, value defensive backs, so they might carry one more. So bottom line is this. Whoever's playing defensive back for the Rams against the Chargers tonight is literally fighting for a job from starter from the start of that game all the way to the end of the fourth quarter they are all fighting for a position usc football you might recall we mentioned in a recent clip that utah and oregon are teams who could trip up usc because they play the antidote to the uh, to the air raid offense that the SC is going to run. They run the Oregon, Utah, they run the ball a ton. And USC, of course, they want to line up on defense in a 3-3-5. That might not be enough people in the box, so USC is going to have to cheat, bring some more people up to try and stop the run. And I'm thinking, yeah, Utah and Oregon could do it. And then somebody reminded me, what about Stanford in week two? Stanford also plays smash mouth football. They fell under the radar last year. They had a couple of injuries. They dropped off. But now Cardinal coach David Shaw is looking at his team and says, we are a tiger lying in the weeds. And that was a hint for USC. And you know what? I kind of buy it. I'll be honest with you. That's a trap game, especially in week two. Bad news for the Trojans, former number one recruit, Corey Foreman. He was a defensive end. He is injured yet again. He is out for a few weeks. We do not know how he got injured. Also, high profile transfers, linebacker Shane Lee, who came from Alabama, and Romello Height, who came from Auburn. They weren't participating in all of the drills for the Trojans at practice. Some, but not all. So they're being limited right now. Here is something I did not know about the Trojans. Cornerback Sierra Wright played LeBron James' son in Space Jam 2. And I had to make sure I underland jam because I was tempted to say space balls. That would be for the wife. She loves that movie. Uh, Coach Lincoln Riley, by the way, said something that made me scream hallelujah. Team, quote, Teams that have less penalties aren't any good, unquote. This means a lot of different things for the Trojans. For one, if you don't have a lot of penalties, now hear me out, it means a lack of aggression. It means you're not going for it. So in other words, though, read between the lines. Riley will accept certain penalties, 
certain penalties, the occasional pass interference. He'll accept that, you know, the, but the dead ball fouls, he won't accept. Offsides, he won't accept it. Uh, illegal motion, he won't accept. Uh, hitting somebody like five seconds after the whistle, he's not going to accept it. In other words, <coughs> Clay Helton penalties. Because the Trojans were known for that crap when he was the coach. Meanwhile, over at UCLA, uh, Kalen Ramsey, safety, he returned to practice. Kamen Ramsey, I apologize. He was the top recruit coming to the Bruins for this season in the class of 2022. He was apparently injured. Having said that, we don't know what was injured. Um, UCLA, they're mum on things about their recruits. The LA Sparks season. I compared it yesterday to a patient on life support. Well, the patient is dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. D-E-D, -E dead. They've lost eight of nine games. And on top of that, it was a crunch time for the season when they were allegedly trying to make a playoff push. The Sparks, who have won the title a few times, are one of the marquee franchises in the WNBA. They will miss the playoffs in consecutive years. That has not happened since 1998. And if you want to find a way to argue and debate who to blame... Go for it. But you know what? Of course you don't care. <laughs> Nor should you. LAFC fullback Giorgio Chiellini will become a pundit for Sky Sport Italia when the new season starts over, over in Europe. He will be a pre- and post-match analyst. And it's a little curious, I must admit. Uh, I'm not saying that he's leaving LAFC, and I'm not going to say that this is going to create drama in the locker room. But you look at the NBA on TNT, which we all love, right? When they have players come in to be analysts who are still active players, they're going to be injured players. They're going to be players who have already been eliminated or, you know, injured for the year. Chiellini's playing, guys. I... Seems a little strange that an active player would actually stop training or whatever and say, yeah, you know. And you might be saying, well, how much time is it really out of his day? And I'm here to tell you, I only make these 10 to 12 minute vi video clips. It takes me two hours to prepare for them, even though I'm sitting in a basement right now. More from uh, Galaxy Manor, manager Greg Vanny on Ricky Pooj. We mentioned him earlier. He's not playing tonight. What they have, One of the things that they want from him is when he, they, when he eventually plays is to shoot more. If he had stayed at Barcelona, he would have been primarily a facilitator. And can you blame the Galaxy, though, for asking him to shoot more often? If he's a facilitator, if he's just a facilitator with the Galaxy, who's he passing to? Kevin Cabral? Douglas Costa, they've never put the ball in the net consistently this year. Cabral can't shoot. Douglas Costa doesn't even care. So, yeah, I think they actually have to get him to shoot more. So, <laughs> I, I want to be honest with you. I don't want to call this like a Hail Mary for the Galaxy. Maybe it's like, I don't know, taking your Holy Rosary and rubbing it for good luck. Maybe not a Hail Mary. You tell me. If, my, if the nuns that I grew up with at Catholic school heard that line, I'd get the hell kicked out of me. But let's put that aside for now. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, don't be afraid to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We are trying to build something here for L.A. sports. I'm James. Thanks for watching. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Take care.